Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another episode of The Lab Podcast, and I believe this is episode 24. (laughs) And, uh, you know, today we're just kind of talking about uh, our intentions and goals for the month, because August was a bit of a shit show. I I don't know if it was as much of a shit show for everyone else out there, but for Cal and I, it was a little crazy, a little, little bit of like this whole life's gonna throw all the hurdles your way. So, new month. (laughs) <laughs> fresh start we're gonna we're gonna start off with the intentions of things being a little smoother but uh you never know so kel how's it going <laughs> it's going um i have just completed my first full week of self-employment um nice. so starting week two because we're recording a little uh a day late that are normal um yeah so but yeah, so I start in week two, but week one I had was rough um, mentally, I think. So, <laughs> How's, uh, uh, if you don't just, mind. Yeah, yeah, no, so it's just like really stressful. Um, well, not stressful. So essentially what I've been doing was coaching part time and doing bodybuilding as well as working full time, like 40 to 50 or I would say 50 hours a week ish. And, um, that, that left my days very, very busy. And then last week I just didn't have as much because I eliminated 50 hours of my work week. Right. (laughs) So I felt like I was, I, I just got in my head like crazy, just like anxiety. Cause I'm like, Oh, am I not doing enough? Like, what is this feeling? What is this feeling? (laughs) And um, so essentially, I had to talk myself off a bunch of ledges just to. Ah, uh, it's just sorry to stress say. an adjustment, I guess. I it's kind of hard. It never goes away. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm just smiling, nodding, because that's exactly how it feels a lot. And uh, you know, for me, I hope for you know, I hope for your sake it, it goes away. But I'm always just like, oh fuck, there's something to do, and I'm not doing it. And yeah, uh, that's what I yeah. basically am like, just walking through my day, like I'm forgetting something is what it feels like. Mm-hmm. It's just like that. I don't know. Like you, you're just walking around forgetting like a midterm is due is what it feels like. Almost. Yeah. Like- <laughs> yeah. There's like this sense of urgency and you're not really sure where to direct it sometimes. Yeah, what's the urgent matter? <laughs> exactly. You're like, there is an emergency and it needs to be done. I'm just not sure what it is. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what it feels like. So I was essentially just dealing with that all week. Um, towards the end of the week, I got better. But um, yeah, it was a strange feeling. <laughs> so just trying to get my routines back in order, you know, like come up with a new one that's going to work. Um, yeah, yeah. So it's just just adjusting, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, you you will find your groove and your new routine to where it won't feel like as like crazy where you're lost because you don't <laughs> have a routine built in yet. Uh, exactly. So that's why, like for me, you know, I have a routine, and when it get like when my routine is thrown off, I'm just all sorts of lost because there's nothing else like dictating it besides myself. Right. So. Yeah, it's 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 a whole new learning experience. <laughs> yeah, I it was just something that I don't I don't I think like cuz you when I like imagined working for myself, like you imagine all these things, but you don't imagine that feeling, so it's just like yeah. it's something I didn't expect, I suppose, and I don't know if I could yeah. have even prepared for it to be honest cuz nah, yeah, probably yeah. not. It's something so. that you don't really you know, you just don't know. You can't understand it until you're you're going through it. In it, um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so there's, you know, the fun parts of, you know, it, it, there's its plus and minuses, right? You don't get to just clock in and out and you know leave work at work. Uh, you are your boss. You <laughs> you're you're on twenty four seven, and it's like, I'm just now able to kind of pick a cutoff time. Uh, to end work and just be like, no, we're not doing anymore because there was many years where I would just wake up, work, and and work until I I went to sleep. But I'm realizing, you know, obviously for mental health reasons, (laughs) that is not good. (laughs) So if you can, uh, try to save yourself the hassle and don't grind yourself into the ground. (laughs) That's the goal. And the other thing is, like, now Instagram is, like, kind of worky. So it's, like, 
I don't know where I'm supposed to scroll now. Where's my like, like my you know like escaping space? So it's just I know. it's just feels strange. I don't know. It's just different, I suppose. So no, hopefully, yeah. I get, I'll, I'll at least get used to the feelings of it, so I'll know what to expect. But um, it was uh, kind of threw me off kilter a little bit. How was your week last week? Uh, yeah, it was good. Um, I guess I might have a stricture. So the <laughs> September first, <laughs> literally September first. <laughs> New problem. Uh huh. Yeah. So I uh, I went down to San Francisco to see Dr. Chen. For anyone's listening, uh, you probably know, but I'm trans, and uh, <laughs> I had this little thing called phalloplasty, which is you know. Where they uh, make you a dick out of your arm. Mm. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, I sacrificed an arm and part of my leg for that. And it's, uh, you know, been a, uh, it, you know, there's, there's certain parts about file pasty that you're like grateful for, but also you're like, God damn it, like it's just again, you know? Uh, so, there's a high complication rate with this surgery. So, if you're, you're contemplating, just keep that in mind. It pretty much, Basically, my full time job, I feel like, for two years was surgeries. <laughs> um, I'd be like, go to work, go off of work, go back for another surgery, and until I quit and work for myself. But um, yeah, so stricture is basically so they create uh, a new urethra for you uh, via part of your forearm skin and right at the part where your, your old urethra and your new urethra join. Uh, you're pretty prone to getting strictures there. That's where I kind of keep getting a recurring stricture and uh, haven't been able to like empty my bladder very well lately, which is annoying in and of itself and can be a little painful. Uh, so went and got checked out and he was kind of like, <laughs> just looked at, cause you pee in this little thing. It's a Euroflow test and it measures the strength of your your stream mm. and all that stuff. And you, it can compare it to previous tests. And uh, so I guess my peak this time was like 10, and last time it was 17, which those numbers probably mean nothing to anybody, but just, <laughs> um, so it's not as strong. There's it, difference. It's kind of progressed. <laughs> yeah, it's progressed in, in the wrong direction. And so he just looked at me and was like, I think your stricture's back. And I was like, hey, it makes sense. That was a pretty <laughs> awful pee I just did. <laughs> so he checked my so bladder. <laughs> and uh, he was like, yeah, you have a full bladder still. I was like, what? That was actually the most shocking part to me because I had peed a pretty good amount, and it was only a third of my bladder. So I was kind of wondering how big my bladder actually is, first of all. And second of all, I didn't even realize my bladder was still mostly full. It felt like I had emptied it. So, um, yeah, if it's not a stricture, it means it's a nerve issue, possibly. And I'm kind of hoping it's stricture because I don't know what you do for a nerve issue. So if I could have a solution, that would that would be better. So long story short, I have to go in for a cystoscopy, and they have to put you under for that. And then if I have a stricture, he'll he'll just fix it in that moment. Then you gotta have a catheter for a few days. But honestly, I, I'm not really feeling any type of way. Like it kind of sucks, but at the same time. It's less of a hassle than this stupid ass knee issue I've been dealing with for almost a year and had nothing help or do it. Like nothing's been done. So I'm kind of like, thanks for the solution. You know, thanks for being a good surgeon. Um, after meeting with different surgeons for my, my knee and then seeing Dr. Chen, it, I was going in there kind of having this expectation to, you know, be brushed off and talked over and not really have much accomplished. So it was, obviously, I know Dr. Chen's not like that, but I haven't seen him for about three years, and I was worried maybe he was burned out from the pandemic, but he was just as nice as ever, listened, he acts like you're the only patient that you have for the entire day, he just, like, takes his time, and so it just restored my faith in uh, humanity. <laughs> so you just so, popped your leg well, up at least and there's like, that. Right, so what do you know about knees, Dr. Chen? <laughs> right exactly it's like do, do you know any good orthopedic surgeons around here because damn but yeah so it's a small hiccup i would it's really nothing that's going to uh derail me for more than a, a few days so i'm not 
not bummed about it, not concerned, it's fine. <laughs> nice. Well, hey, that's at least not too bad, right? So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. How far is San Francisco from you? Uh, technically, it should only be, you know, like an hour and a half drive, but with traffic sometimes, man, it's, it's taken like four hours before. So, um, yeah, so we, we left, I feel like, I think about 930 or so, and we got there at about, um, 1145. So, it, you know, it's, it's a bit of a drive, but there is just mostly traffic. If there was no traffic, it would be pretty close, but, um yeah traffic traffic blows <laughs> another mark for california <laughs> yeah legit it's just like yeah cool you you should be able to go up to the mountains or the ocean uh but also you know there's traffic going to either direction and then i'm just kind of in the armpit of california where <laughs> it's 110 degrees all week long so I don't know why I pay as much as I do to live here because I'm pretty sure I'm melting. <laughs> I was freezing today. I actually have sweatpants on, so boom. What? <laughs> what is the weather like in Ohio? Uh, it was like 72 today um, Damn. this morning, which was cooler than it has been substantially, but it's been like off and on rainy, um, so I think it knocked out all of the warm. I'm totally That's, fine. I'm jealous. I'm 100% yeah. jealous. This is, it's, it's abnormally hot for this time of year, but we usually do have like one week where you just would rather die. <laughs> so it came around. It's, I would say, you know, it's had some hot days, but it's been a more mild summer than I expected. Uh, we had some rain, clouds and, and stuff like that. And then now September we got the scorcher. So, but <laughs> By next uh, Wednesday, I think it's only going to be 86. So we're going to come down. That's yeah. good. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, it, it's been a weird week. It's just been weird. I, not necessarily bad, but, like, I went through a little brief, like, existential crisis this weekend. <laughs> and finally what happened that. Let, let. no that was when i was texting you like for my check-in i was like all freaking oh, yeah, out yeah. and like losing my goal and shit like that <laughs> and it went awry and cody talked to me off my ledge and then now i'm back to normal <laughs> today was awesome at the gym so that was good even though it was crowded uh sucked yeah. it up but well yeah i mean i don't know it's just crazy. as much as i don't know i i I totally understand, though. I like your your whole existential crisis. I feel like I go through that about on a daily <laughs> basis as well. Um, you know, because we we are. I'm a little older than you, so I feel like my clock is definitely uh, ticking uh, every fucking day. Like fast forward, but uh, <laughs> it's it's rough when I I feel like it has a lot to do with being trans and yeah. feeling like. Uh, you basically lost out on half of your life, so you feel like everything is urgent. Maybe that's your sense of urgency. <laughs> exactly. I think that's what it is. Because you, you feel like you have so much time to make up for. And it's just like, mm -hmm. and you look at young kids, like, uh, who was I talking? Oh, uh, I started working at the front desk of my gym uh, just part time. And all these people are like 25, 26, and they're like cis guys. And I'm so jealous and they're like yeah how do you lift weights like what's your split and stuff and i'm like this is what it is and they're like oh maybe i'll give that a try i'm like if i was you i would you don't want to wait <laughs> 10 more years <laughs> you're like don't waste your life do it now <laughs> like well, i usually just run and i'm like don't do it <laughs> <laughs> you're like lift some damn shit man uh dude i have this so okay it's kind of funny so uh, Des and I have been binge watching 90 Day Fiance because like, I don't know, we ran out of things to watch and we started watching it and got kind of addicted and I get almost, okay, I, angry is a strong word, but I get irritated when half these guys, so they're not necessarily completely ugly, at least not the seasons we've watched so far, but they just do not seem to give a fuck about like taking care of themselves and it irritates the hell out of me when i see a cis guy like 
just not taking advantage of having felt, you know, at home in their body since day one. (laughs) And I'm like, dude, you, you could work out and you would like, you would look great. You know, like you have all things playing in your favor and you're wasting it. You're wasting. Like, I feel like they're wasting it and I just can't stand. I get so irritated and Uh, it's a problem. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I feel you. I feel you. (laughs) <laughs> and then it's i start so... looking at kids these young kids like you're talking i'm like damn to be young again and i'm like god <laughs> i'm old <laughs> i know i know it's so fun like so yesterday i went to um my friend's 80s party and, like it was like 80s themed or whatever and i got there and immediately the first question was oh finally someone who was actually made in the 80s i'm like oh my god no <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, and I'm like, oh no, I'm the only one. <laughs> oh, that's kind of sad. But then also, it's like, come on, y'all throwing eighties parties these days are a bunch of posers. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> uh, ridiculous but also just because you're made in the 80s doesn't mean you had style in the 80s because i'm pretty sure we were just wearing little onesies <laughs> yeah, at that point yeah i think so i was born in 88 so <laughs> i was 87 so yeah i definitely didn't know what was going on <laughs> oh no idea no idea what was happening um just oh. all of our baby pictures now have our parents in great 80s outfits oh that's true but man, yeah, I was I was thinking in my head. I think I've talked to my therapist a little bit about it. But I was like, "Is feeling like you missed out on half your life, and you're kind of feeling like you're aging out of the sport that you're so passionate about? Is that means for depression? <laughs> like, <laughs> is, are you allowed to feel depressed about that? Am, am I having like a midlife crisis without? I don't. Um, is are we midlife? midlife? We're midlife, I guess. Um, Isn't it forty midlife? I guess We're not but there I feel yet. Like I'm already there. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I've had a crisis already. So. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I'm in it. I am in it right now. Because <laughs> in bodybuilding yes. years, we're old, so we're already masters yeah. at that. So I know. I think that's uh, what hit me. I'm like, as soon as, as soon as you turn 35, you can compete in masters, and that just feels awful. <laughs> <laughs> You're like 35, you can get masters, really? Masters. Really? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Ridiculous. So, yeah. Uh, so, what's your goal for this month? <laughs> my goal is to not think about how I'm getting old. <laughs> oh my gosh. Just kidding. Um, I would like to, I guess, my intention still with this month is the whole uh, no stones left unturned. And it, Part you know, two. Part two. And uh, we had a lot of the uh, issues and distractions that, that happened last time. So, you know, it it's okay. If, even if that happens again this month, you know, there's still effort. You know, you control your effort no matter what is thrown at you. So that's kind of just my thing. Like, no matter what happens, I still want to give it my 100% effort. And is your chicken done? <laughs> it was reminding me today's shot day. So... <laughs> <laughs> Same thing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, still same, you know, no sense left unturned, just giving you everything I got, even though if, if there's hurdles and, and and all that fun stuff. But uh, how about you? Um, so I came up with uh, my intention partially from our conversation with Dane last episode. So I forget exactly what he was saying, but he was talking about how he fell in love with the process of it all. And I think that's something that I started down. Like, that's how I got into this all because I was working out with you and uh, loving the gym. And I'm like, you know what? So um, I wanted um, because that's kind of how I got into the sport. So um, but I think I've lost sight of that. And I was trying to explain how I felt to Maddie. And it was like, if you're picturing like someone on a pirate ship or like on the Titanic, like it's everybody's like looking through a periscope at what the goal is. So like they're seeing land. That's all they're looking at. But they're trying to like steer their boat from that is what I felt like I was doing almost. So like I wasn't 
seeing the bigger picture. I was only so focused on the five years ahead that I lost f focus on what the hell I was doing right now. So I think that um, my goal for this September is to fi fall back in love with the process of it all. So I kind of want to essentially put my periscope away and just live in the moment and love the moment and that grind. And I know I do because I wouldn't be here if I didn't. Like I wouldn't continue to pursue this. So I know I love it and I just want to fall back in love with it and appreciate it for what it is. And I think that would snap me out of a lot of things that are giving me really bad anxiety. <laughs> um, so it's kind of twofold. I think it'll help me m more reach my goal by actually caring about the, the process of it all as well as relieve a lot of the stuff that's going on in my head. So that's kind of my intention for this this month. Um, yeah. No numbers attached to it, no nothing. Just falling back in love with the grind, which I know is possible. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I like that. Because uh, if you think about it too, one day you'll be looking back and being like, wow, I miss those times, you know? Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of a good reminder when you're trying to rush the process or you're wishing like you would, things would move faster it's you know there's always times i look back and i'm just like damn i feel like i kind of didn't really live in the present enough in those moments and i, mm -hmm. I kind of miss miss those days so this could be kind of one of those moments that you don't really want to miss so i think that's a really Absolutely. good goal intention for the month <laughs> right and like i i've been trying to practice more gratitude is one of my uh methods of trying to stay in the moment um, and I was kind of just thinking about it a little bit earlier today when I was journaling and it was just like the gratitude that I should have right now for my life. Like I'm starting a new business. I'm, uh, in the best shape I've ever been in. Like it's pretty exciting things that are happening in my day to day. And, um, I'm still growing at leaps and bounds in almost every aspect of my life. And I, like, I feel like I just got so yeah. distracted and so, unappreciative of what is going on right now just by looking ahead for too long it's almost like getting lost what is that saying is like getting lost in the forest or you can't losing the know. forest for the trees or something yeah something like that and yeah. um and i just really want to get back to that because what it's like anxiety is living in the future depression's living in the past and i just need to stay in the present for right now yes so yeah so that's my like that. my goal <laughs> yeah and it's weird how hard that actually is <laughs> it, it's, it's a, it seems like it should be easy but it's definitely not but i think to people who have big dreams or big goals i think it's really easy to get lost in the goals um mm -hmm. and people especially like because i think we all get confused in like the 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 motivational speak almost right it's like you want to be able to have big goals that scare you and blah 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 everything that everybody's always telling you just reach for it just keep grinding and it's just like sometimes you just have to like let it go and just do what you fucking love and mm -hmm. just keep doing it because that's gonna lead you to where you want to go and you don't have to have so much anxiety <laughs> <laughs> yeah and it's also you know the thing is is obviously it's scary and you know you're supposed to have big dreams and they're supposed to scare you and stuff but also if you're doing what you love regardless of what happens like that's a positive <laughs> so yeah. if you're doing I mean, what you love in the moment that that's cool yeah exactly and i um i'm reading i'm rereading atomic habits in this book called drive so two books simultaneously that are on similar topics. And um, I just read one quote that was about um, doing the mundane tasks and just doing them over and over and over again because that's how you get the big tasks. And it's like the same concept that they talk about all the time in Atomic Habits. So it's that 1% better idea. And so that's what all the books are telling you to do is just to keep that small stepping right to get to your big goals and i think when you just want to look for that leap it's it's almost like i fell into the trap that 
all clients do or all people who <laughs> want to get bigger or want fat loss and you just want that shortcut and it's just like that's just not how it happens that's not what it works and you wouldn't yeah. want it if that is what it was so just gotta take a dose of my own medicine and practice a bit of what <laughs> I preach I think. yeah harder harder than you'd think but yeah just with just like with workouts progressive overload it applies to yep. Uh, your career as well you don't you can't just expect to uh, start out on top or start out knowing what you're doing it's a learning process and you just keep climbing and uh, yeah what would you say is your biggest anxieties that you struggle with when you start getting too much into either well the future because you said you just kind of get in your head a bit yeah, so I'm just curious I I do. I just, uh, so mine's just like a deep sense of overwhelm, right? So it's just like having so much to do that you don't know where to start. And it's just like you get frozen. Um, and I just get that severe sense of overwhelm. And I, I always tell Maddie, I'm like, I just want an armadillo. And it just means I just want to like close up, you know, and like turn into a little armored ball. <laughs> That's what I always picture is like there's a <laughs> there's a gif out there of this armadillo just like walking around and then all of a sudden he just like balls up and I'm, that's what I always feel like. <laughs> um, and it's just like you just yeah. want to ball up and, and hide essentially. But um, I just get that deep sense of overwhelm just because it's like you can see – I can see everything that I need to do to get where, to where I need to be, right? And it's just like it's so many steps. And, yeah, they're little steps, but there's just so many. It just gets so scary yeah. to me. And um, so that that's where I go almost every time. Um, so I, I try to keep the blinders on as much as possible just to stay focused because um, I think you do need yeah. some some of that at least. Yeah, like if I feel like it would probably mean you you probably didn't care enough if you didn't feel some sense of uh, anxiety or, or, or urgency or whatever. Um, so it's like obviously it means a lot to you uh, because you care a lot. Um, but yeah, the, the overwhelm is real in it because you have to you know d delegate work to yourself and it's it's not it's not easy. But uh, do you like start off the day with you know, to do lists or how have you kind of figured what has worked yeah. for you so far? So, so far I, I've been trying to set up a schedule as much as possible, almost like I was when I was working. So like I wake up, do all my morning stuff and like take care of myself first. So I make breakfast first meal, um, and then do some journaling, uh, some reading, and then I go through emails see if there's any pressing issues if there's no pressing issues then i move into a to-do list so i try to take um three things that will make me feel like i got some something done so it's like the three <laughs> top things that i could do that i can actually complete in one day and i'll write those things down and then um i'll kind of go to work and try to get those done um throughout the day and if i if i don't get those done then they go on the list for tomorrow but um usually those get knocked off at least and sometimes way more if I get in a nice flow, but sometimes not. And, and I'm sure you felt something along these lines before, but it, I currently am just like, I've talked about wanting to do this thing for so long. It's like, <laughs> and you've told so many people that that's what you want to do. And, but like work was holding me back or whatever. I always had an excuse of why I couldn't do it. And now I'm like, <laughs> okay, now it's just, I have to do it. <laughs> I already told all these people yeah. <laughs> I quit the job. <laughs> and now there's no other excuse. So it's just like if I fail, it means – or if, if it fails, it means I failed as opposed to like – you know, and it's like – so it's like even more pressure that I don't need, but it's, – and it's all self-imposed, <laughs> of course, so, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have a feeling you will, you will do just fine. Oh, I think, man. yeah. You're experiencing very normal things, but <laughs> you will find what works for you. And yeah. it, we have kind of similar ways of doing things already. So I think uh, I think you're on the right path. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's just a scary path, you know, and it's all change is scary. Um, 
Oh, yeah. So, yeah. It, just keep focusing on the one thing I can do for the day. Three things I try to get done. Just keep yeah. grinding. Doing that uh, mon- mundane yeah. shit, right? Yeah. And if all else fails, there's always OnlyFans. So, OnlyFans, uh... Yeah. <laughs> I keep telling my dog Betty that I'm going to put her on Only Pulse. So, she's got nice little <laughs> Grinch feet. <laughs> I think it's about time that she starts pulling her weight as a roommate. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think that is a good good plan. <laughs> um, yeah, so I mean, you're off to a good start. I know, <laughs> yeah. you know, it, it's it's probably feeling stressful and like you, you don't know what you're doing. But the secret is, no one really does, uh, especially not at first. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I I have to say that one of the things that I do appreciate about myself is that I am very aware of my shortcomings. So when I know I don't know something, I'll, I'm almost always willing to find who knows about that and just do whatever they tell me, which can be naive, I think. <laughs> but also I find it like I, I try – to pride myself on my coachability. So like the fact that like if I'm going to ask for help, I'll do whatever the fuck you tell me to do. Like if I think that you know what you're talking about, <laughs> like I'm like, okay, let's do it. Yeah. Cause like, I think it's the scientist in me. Like, it's just like, uh, we at least can try. Like clearly what I'm doing currently is not working. So <laughs> what you got, <laughs> <laughs> I'm all about yeah. that tri- trial yeah. and error situation. So, <laughs> Yeah, no, well, I mean, because how else are you going to know, right? Got to gotta try it and yeah, see how but, it goes. Well, and I'm sure you've, <laughs> like, I'm sure you've come across people who are, like, who will pay pay you, say they want to coach, and not do a goddamn thing that you tell them to or try to coach themselves. And it's yeah. just like, well, okay, then why did you ask me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, I mean, that's a whole other topic we could probably touch on. It's just <laughs> – um <laughs> being coachable right yeah. uh yeah so it is it is well i don't know what i was saying uh <laughs> it's just like yeah you know if if there is someone who like if they're like mentorships for example i feel like can be really useful uh because maybe you do know what you're doing but you like want some validation or you just want to make sure you're on the right track. So that's when like seeking help and asking questions and then, you know, getting someone else's viewpoint from experience can definitely be helpful. Um, And yeah, you know, being coachable, obviously I think you have a big, you know, uh, what's it called? uh, Advantage because there's some people that go into it and they're super arrogant and just want to do things their way, whether it works or not. And then, Unfortunately, that that doesn't always work out. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, I think it's just, especially when you start something new, like just fucking leave the ego at the door. And I think it comes down to everything, like in life. If like you're trying to actually make yourself better, there's no real room for ego. Like you have to have enough, mm-hmm. uh, for lack of a better term, enough balls to actually take on the risk, and then just fucking leave it there. Like. I don't know. I just don't really see if you're trying to learn ego doesn't have a lot of room to be in the equation if in my opinion. So Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's yeah. your main focus on uh so I know your intention is goal to have no stones left unturned. Like how mm-hmm. how are you going to go about the day to day in that? Like how are you channeling that in the day to day, I suppose? Um honestly, well, I mean, part of it too, I feel like I really resonate with your falling in love with the process again mm-hmm. because it's so easy to get lost. You know, last time I competed was in 2020, and uh, it's hard to keep going day after day, following the same meal plan, eating the same shit, and then you know, still wondering, you know, like, am I ever going to be at a point where my coach is like, yeah, you're ready. Let's let's do this. Let's compete because I'm just waiting here. Like, I feel like I'm just not <laughs> getting anywhere aimlessly yeah it's really really hard when you don't really have this projected goal or site to look forward to so 
you know, falling in love with the process, staying in the present, I think, uh, you know, that's definitely something that I need to work on this month. But to have a specific, more tangible thing, the food. Food is my biggest downfall. Um, I just, I don't know, have a small stomach, I guess. I don't, like, I, some days I do, I do great. And then the next day I just have like an aversion to everything. I'm just like, that sounds awful. That makes me nauseous. I don't want to eat that. Um, so definitely the food because that's one of the main things you need to grow. And I got to fucking suck it up and be able to eat my food and, you know, digestion, uh, you know, if, if it allows. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's my main, my main focus yeah. is, is making sure to eat the fucking food. Yeah, me and you have, like, the same issue, like, thing, like, food, but I eat way too much, and you eat way too much. <laughs> We're on, like, the opposite ends we... of the food spectrum. <laughs> yeah, I wish we, we could kind of, like, locks ourselves. meet in the middle. <laughs> I know. I was like, that's the thing with bodybuilding, man. When you're kind of at a disadvantage if you have a large appetite when you're dieting down, but you're at a pretty big disadvantage during building phases uh, if your appetite is small. So there really isn't like, a, oh, like you you must, you don't really eat much. You're, you're going to do well competing, but it's, how are you going to build muscle if you have a bad appetite? So it's, yeah, I wish I had a little of both. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, which had a better appetite. Uh, I envy those who, I, you know, you, you get those messages sometimes where people are just like, how could you not like bulking? That's the easy part. And I'm like, fuck you. It's not the easy part for me. Uh, but thank you for that, making me feel like shit. <laughs> uh, like, I think it's like, I think, bulk, I think bulking is one of those things that we just talked about. Like, it's one of those things that you don't understand the difficulty until you're in it. And mm -hmm. maybe it's different for, like, cis guys who are already kind of big. But, like, for us where we're trying to, like, make up a lot of ground or, like, even, like, like, like people who had, um, like, skinny guys, like, like, there are regular cis skinny dudes or people who are, like, skinny fat or, and shit like that. And it's just, like, it's really hard to put on weight sometimes and, like, put on the right kind of weight. Cause I can put on some weight, <laughs> but I get to make it the right kind of weight is a little bit difficult for me. So. <laughs> yeah, that's always a challenge. And you know, I don't know if this is a good comparison or, or not, but uh, so something that I was thinking about, I think I've talked to you about this before. Uh, definitely, I talked does about this, but uh, so. <sighs> I hope no one takes this offensively. I'm just truly trying to like almost make us feel better if it's possible. But <laughs> uh, so, you know, we have this thing where we tend to compare ourselves to cis guys, right? And cis bodybuilders uh, specifically. And we just feel small and we're like, damn, you know, like we're never going to get there. But who we should actually <laughs> be comparing ourselves to <laughs> is, <laughs> oh, this is so bad. I'm sorry. This is offensive. <laughs> uh, so like, we see like female bodybuilders, right? Um, yeah. They're basically uh, probably taking more than we do. <laughs> yeah, <that's probably> true. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, obviously they're, they're not natural. Uh, and so I'm like, we're comparing ourselves to these cis dudes, but I feel like we should actually be comparing ourselves to like the, the how big the bodybuilders. female bodybuilders. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, so we're pretty comparable, you know. Yeah, we we've, we've done a good job. It, yeah, <laughs> it's like, oh man, like it sounds so awful. I hope people don't interpret that wrong. But uh, it's just like when you get caught up in that comparison trap and realizing that you're kind of probably comparing yourself to the wrong people, as much as you like want to, you know, be comparable to to yeah. cis guys, and yeah, you can to an extent. But the the big cis bodybuilders that you see not only have freak genetics for cis men like they're just they're just freaks and you like yeah like yeah. we're not i don't know maybe we're genetically blessed but not in the cis men realm <laughs> uh, and it's just like a lot of these guys have been especially like the younger ones like nick walker has been like what taking en enhancing since he's like 18 and it's just like so he was already at the 
tip top of his testosterone levels, but he's also like juiced up to the max. So it's like, and he was like training at that time. And you know, those like guys at that age don't have any kind of like limiting factors <laughs> in their head or in their bodies. Yeah. So it's like, no, we're coming from behind in, in many a way. And that's what she said. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh man yeah and it's like yeah uh, now i'm overthinking i shouldn't have said what i said but <laughs> it'll be fine it's just like <laughs> i it, it makes me feel a little better because you don't realize where you started from like if you're comparing yourself to nick walker for example it's just like you can't Their, his life is completely different like he was yeah. born in the you know way different yeah. and um so i don't know it makes me feel a little better because it's just like i i think we're doing we're doing pretty good you know like we're we're maybe you know higher in in than we think if we compare ourselves to a, a different i think uh, you're right but <laughs> level. Well, because like so the other thing that i've even told people before like just recently actually is that like if you think about it even so we were jock ish in high school both of us and um mm -hmm. like if we were jock guys we probably would have been either on the basketball team or the football team or something and we would have been in the weight room already and like understood mm -hmm. that kind of thing but like for female sports i don't know about like in our school at least like we might have done that like once preseason maybe in high school but like not like on a regular basis and it sure as hell wasn't pushed the way it's pushed on on guys and you don't get those opportunities and if you don't know to do that like you didn't fall in love with it like i don't know i feel like every yeah like you, we're just put behind on so many different things like i i think we do get caught up in that comparison game because it's inevitable because it's human nature because that's what society has set us up to do to ourselves but like mm -hmm. All in all, we're doing uh, really fucking good <laughs> like for where yeah. we're at, you know? Like, we really are killing it. It's just yeah, hard to admit. Yeah, I think, yeah. No, I think that's definitely a better way to look at it. We, we are doing quite well from, you know, the cards we were dealt. And, yeah, as, you know, we were, I was on, you know, female basketball team, soccer, whatever. We I, I never saw the inside of the, the weight room at my school. Never. I don't even know what it looks like. So <laughs> it was not a thing. It was no. not a thing for females. I, I went to a Christian school. I don't know if that contributed. Uh, but it existed. The weight room existed, but only for, for the the boys, the men. Like, I think they even had a period in PE where they did weightlifting. And that was not something that was given to us. So, yeah, there was no opportunity to realize, oh, hey, I really, really like lifting weights. It just wasn't a thing just kind of like how i never had the opportunity to not believe in god <laughs> because yeah. i was christian school church you know through my whole last life so uh yeah all the setbacks that happen i would say we are definitely doing okay <laughs> yeah i mean we're killing it i think i mean look at your damn shoulders come on um so <laughs> I, don't, I don't know i think it's really hard to cut yourself slack when we're in a one in a sport that that that's the whole point is to compare each other um so i mean it's really hard and we set ourselves up for that but i think staying focused on just doing what the fuck we love like finding love yeah. in the every day and in every weight that you're pushing up um i think that's gonna help us both tremendously <laughs> yeah and, and still remembering you know like where you came from how far you've come and uh the obstacles that you've overcome getting to the place where you're at i think that's probably a good thing for everyone to consider at some point if you're feeling Absolutely. impatient or you're like you're not making progress and yeah you know bodybuilding you are literally being judged and compared uh, against other people but uh just try your best to compare yourself to yourself and where you were at a few months ago, a year ago, three years ago, whatever, 10 years ago, because uh, that's going to be the most gratifying because, you know, everyone's different. Uh, obviously, as as trans men, our journey is very unique. So it's hard to just pick someone else to compare ourselves to in general. So it's probably not the healthiest for us to even try. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but here we are, trying anyway. I know. Every day, I gotta talk myself off the ledge. <laughs> I feel good right now, but uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow morning. <laughs> Tomorrow I'll be back to be like, damn, I'm not growing and I can't eat. <laughs> uh, but hey, it's all practice, right? So as long as we keep showing up and keep practicing, it will get easier. It always, that's how things work, right? Is just, if anything. So I don't, I think, I don't remember. I might have told you this story personally, but I don't know if I've ever told it on the podcast. So it, I um, am very allergic to cats. Like, uh, like I get really itchy and really sneezy, um, and I have been since college. And um, so when I graduated college, in an effort to become unallergic, because this was my goal, was that I was going to just <laughs> expose myself to a lot of cats. And I oh, got no. a cat and everything <laughs> and, uh, to make myself unallergic to cats because I figured the more I the more interaction the more my body got used to seeing cat fur <laughs> and like cat saliva <laughs> then I would it would recognize it because I had I was a scientist and I'm like I I'm I know what I'm doing I'm just gonna do this self experiment <laughs> and it kind of worked. I'm not gonna lie; it kind of worked. I get I'm much less allergic to cats now. Um, sometimes, <laughs> so my girlfriend has a cat, and we live together. So I we I have a cat now again. Um, my previous cat <laughs> died. Uh, she lived for nine years, and I was fine. Mm. Uh, but anyway, so I, I only really have allergic reactions to cats now if they're in my face like directly like mm. like lay on my face and then i'll have allergic reaction it's just like itchy eyes usually but it's much mm. better so the more yeah. practice you get the more uh <laughs> contact and <laughs> exposure <laughs> the easier easier it becomes <laughs> disclaimer no one try this at home don't try this at home <laughs> <laughs> it's not, I would, especially if you have like a, a deadly allergy. <laughs> yeah. They're like, I'm gonna try this with shellfish. <laughs> I'm gonna go get stung by a bunch of bees. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah. I have I don't not think told you, you this story. How? Every... <laughs> no, I don't. I mean, that's great that it that it worked out. Um, it worked out. To for only me. itchy eyes. Yeah, but luckily no, no like anaphylactic shock. <laughs> nope, no anaphylactic shock. <laughs> That's good. Uh, some people are allergic to hard work, but I don't really know how to help that sometimes. <laughs> Shoot, can't help that one. Can't just no. expose yourself to hard work. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, got to do baby steps for that one, maybe, <laughs> but. <laughs> so yeah. well do you have anything else you want to it? cover yeah i don't i don't think so i think i'm just i feel determined uh for this month uh just to uh yeah you know i hope shit goes smoother but even if it doesn't uh not let it you know get to me derail me in any way that i can control uh yeah. And uh, hopefully, you know, maybe we can come back in the beginning of next month and uh, be happy with our efforts. And, and maybe we can be like, damn, we, we didn't fall into uh, the comparison trap as much. And we, we did stay in the present. And uh, yeah, that's uh, hopefully, hopefully maybe I'm being a little too optimistic. Hey, I think we can work at it and we probably won't be perfect, but at least... Nah. The more you put a magnifying glass on the thing you want to get better at, the, I feel like the better it becomes. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, yeah, I, I, don't, oh. I don't think I have anything else. Oh, yes. No, I don't have anything else really. But um, I did want to say, like, since we're sharing our goals and intentions for the month, it'd be really cool if our listeners also shared theirs. So if you want to drop a comment on whatever you're listening to, or on our Instagram post. Um, we'd love to hear what your goals are and your intentions for the month so we can cheer each other on virtually. 
Yes, yes. And then also, uh, you know, eventually, maybe by next month, we haven't confirmed anything. Uh, hopefully we can do another uh, challenge for the lab because uh, I know that has been helpful for people in the past. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, you know, we'll have more uh, participants as, as we keep doing these, these challenges. So also let us know if uh, like a challenge would be something that you'd be interested in. Uh, Cause yeah, just want to be helpful in some way, shape or form and helpful and supportive with your goals. So share your goals and share oh, if yeah. you want a challenge. <laughs> if you want a challenge for those goals. So I have the power talk today. And since we are talking about goals so much, it's a little bit, it's uh, similar to goals. Sweet. All right. Um, so shoot, let me see. Burr, burr, burr. All right. So this one is about persistence, um, and it's from Bear Bryant, who I don't know who that is, but I like to quote. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> never quit. It's the easiest cop out in the world. Set a goal and don't quit until you attain it. When you do attain it, set another goal and then don't quit that one either. Never quit. So I <laughs> read this other thing, and uh, it said – you can't fail if you never stop trying. <laughs> and um, that one has really helped me a lot last week um, because I got a lot of try in me. And so if I just keep going and never saying I'm stopping and I can't quit, <laughs> then I don't fail. And so I think mm -hmm. right now that that's going to be kind of my mantra for the month is that just don't stop going and you just won't fail. So – that it's kind of all I have. It's not. It's kind of frank. It's kind of short, but I really liked it, and I hope it helps someone else too, um, because that's what you have control over is your effort, and so it kind of links both my intention and Cody's intention together. Um, so September, uh, twenty twenty two is the month we never quit. So here we go. Yes, I like it. All yeah. right. All right. Cool. Well, that's a good place to end, I think. So no one quit this month, and uh, <laughs> we won't quit either. <laughs> yep, we're all in it together, y'all. All right. Yes. Till next time. Peace. Peace out.